Good morning and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Why don't you stand and greet one another? In its 
time our heart turns from darkness to light Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move, on the move today Any time in weakness, any time in weakness, someone falls upon their knees. Oh, dares to speak the truth that sets men free. Any time the choice is made to stand upon the word, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move. God is on the move, on the move today. Do you believe that this morning, church? Amen. Go and have a seat. Oh, that's me. Hey, have a seat, have a seat. Good to have you here this morning. I know you can read, but I'm just going to give you a couple of special announcements here tonight. The Southcrest Good News Senior Adult Choir is going to be here. So if you have anything called social media, throw it out there tonight that they're going to be here at 6 o'clock singing a 50-plus voice choir. So it's going to be a blessing to come back and listen to that group from Southcrest. So get that out there on your social media. Also going on, I, uh, I think you notice there's a couple of decals out on the Welcome Center that say, In God We Trust, pick one up. Put it on your vehicle, your windshield, or give it to somebody and just proclaim it in God we trust. Also that's going on is the VBS planning. If you happen to notice anything VBS-ish out there in the fellowship, it's coming right around the corner. And everyone is able to help because there's a place for everyone. You can do name tags. You can teach a lesson. You can sing. I was going to say dance, but I forgot we're a Baptist church. So you can do a foot function up here. It's going to be... It's going to be a great VBS, so uh, you want to be part of that. Just a quick planning session going on there. I um, also want to draw your attention to a couple of things that uh, Don Raglan has stepped down as music minister at Calvary Baptist Church. So please lift up Don and Kathy as they continue seeking God's will. And for the Monty Moore family, Monty passed away and stepped into glory. And his memorial service is tomorrow, 2 o'clock at First Baptist La Mesa. So uh, also lift up the Moore family there. But thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us for the first time, in this wonderful bulletin that says, Welcome Guests, and that would be you. So fill that out. Take it back to our Welcome Center at the end of the service. We'll give you a special gift for worshiping with us here. If you want one of us to contact you, then mark that, and we'd be happy to get with you and just tell you more about Calvary Baptist Church. It is great having you here. I'm glad you're here to worship, maybe listen to the Word, and then go out and be world changers. And one way we do that, and that's through prayer. And we do invite you to come to the altar. And it's just not for me and my wife. We invite anybody to come down here and pray at the altar. Or if you sit right where you're at, you're welcome to do so. But reach out, grab somebody's hand, because we are the family of God at Calvary Baptist Church. So let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. thanking you for le for letting us be in your house today and father i just ask that you'll just be with the praise band as they lead our music father i just ask that it just do nothing but honor and glorify you and 
Father, I just come to you just lifting my brother Steve up to you, Father. I just ask that you'll just hide him behind the cross and just lay on his heart what you would have him to say. And, Father, I just come to you just asking that you'll just be with the Monty Moore family, Father. I just ask that you'll just wrap your arms around them and just draw them a little closer to you and just comfort their hearts. And, Father, I just ask that you'll just be with our military wherever they're at, Father, that you'll just that you'll just keep them safe. Father, if there's one here that needs to make a decision, whatever that decision is, Father, I ask that they make it before it's too late. Go with us now through the rest of this day. Forgive us of our sins. I ask these and all of the blessings for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Children, why don't you come on down for the children's moment? Oh, come on down. Don't be scared. I do not have a paddle today. We can whittle on one if you need one. Come on down. I got a gift and everybody gets one, I hope. Take, take and pass, take and pass. Here we go. Chase, come here and help me. Sadie, come here and help me. Maybe you want to hold that. Pass them back. How many more do we need? What am I passing out? Kind of like a wooden brick, huh? Yeah, they're all about the same size, the same dimension, everything. Do we need more? Has everybody got one? Okay, I need y'all to build me a quadrilateral, please. A hexagram? No? Okay, what about something similar? Can you build me a square? You don't think? Let's see if we can build a square. I'll start it. Okay, if you have a, and then we'll build up. Let me show you what we need to do. Okay, here we go. I got it. I got it built. I don't have a degree for an A&M, but I'm working on it. Okay, bring your, bring your brick over here and start building on top of that. Just build it just like that. Whoa, don't tear it up. There we go. I'll put it just and put that one there. Put that one there. And put that one there. There we go. Yeah. And that one there. There we go. One more. Perfecto. There we go. What did we build? A square. We know what it is. What if we were just to throw them on the ground, what would it be? Uh, a pile. They wouldn't know what it is. It would just be a pile. But since we built a square, people know what it is. You know, in Jesus Christ, he builds in us each and every day. But without Jesus Christ, we're just there. We're just a pile. So let me read you what God's word says that, that uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, he says these words. For we are co-workers in God's service. God's building us. By grace, God has given me. I laid the foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. You guys are the someone else's. Did you know that? You're building on what Jesus Christ has gave you or tearing down. Yeah, that's little Cooper girl. That's good. And, and so understand this. Every day, God wants to build in you to be a better Christian, okay? So just as you remember these blocks and bricks right here, don't forget, tomorrow morning, God's going to build in you, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for building inside of us to be a better person for you, a better servant for you, a better warrior for you. Thank you for every boy and every girl here. May they be built on the foundation of Jesus Christ every day. We ask in your name. Everybody said, amen. amen. I ask you to stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do to worship this morning. We're going to sing a song called Ruin Me. It's really hard to sing with an honest heart.
words. Woe to me. Woe to me. I am unclean. A sinner found in your presence. I see you seated on your throne. Exalted, your glory surrounds. for him alone we will never be alone he is always with us standing on this mountain top looking just how far we've come knowing that for every step you were with us kneeling on this battleground seeing just how much you've done knowing Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can sing. Yes, our hearts can sing. Never once did we ever walk alone.
your prayer this morning and let's invite the Holy Spirit into this place so that we can be filled. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and the shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Oh. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Sing that again. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more. Sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the air. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware. Let us become more aware. Your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. Glory Come on, church, sing it like you mean it. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the Sing it. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your 
Michelle, read a scripture for us. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will be done, but yours. You know, even, even Jesus himself asked if the Lord would take the cup from him for what he had to bear on that cross. But he knew that he had to die for us. That's exactly what he did. So as we sing this song, I want you to think about relating it to your life. Though sometimes things don't go our way in the way we plan it, we need to trust him and praise him still. I come, God, I come. I return to the Lord, the one who's broken, the one who's torn me apart. Strike down to find me up. You say you do it all in love that I might know you in your suffering. Though you slay me, yes, I will praise you. Though you take from me, I will bless your name. Though you Sing a song to the one who's all I need. Sing a song to the one who's all I need. My heart and flesh may fail, the earth below give away. But with my eyes, with my eyes, I'll see the Lord lifted high upon that day. Behold the Lamb that was slain, and I'll know that every tear was worth it all. Though you slay me, yet I will pray to you. Though you take from me, I will bless your Though you ruin me, still I will worship, sing a song to the one who's all I need. Sing a song to the one who's all I need. Tonight I'm crying out Let this cup pass from me now You're still more than I need You're enough for me You're enough for me You're enough
God, I thank you so much for what you did on the cross and for dying for us. Father, I pray that everyone in this congregation and in this room and in this town and in this world will know that, Father. That you're enough for us. And that we shouldn't fill our lives with anything else but you. So, Father, I pray that as we talk about building up our life on the foundation of you, you help us to know what part of our life we need to tear down first. In your name I pray, man. Well, I hope you got an amen in you. Amen. And it's good to worship in the Lord's house this morning. Good to have you here. One little announcement I forgot. Women's ministry team meeting at 4 o'clock. It's bad when you forget your wife's ministry team. So I want to plug that in there. Hey, ladies, 4 o'clock. Don't forget, women's ministry team, be there. Important meeting. And it's good to have you here. Last week, we kind of started a new journey about build. How many builders are here? Like, like you, these are just machines right here. You can build anything. Raise your hand. You got a piece of, a stick of butter, and you could build something out of it. Come on, guys. I'm... No, Henry, this is, this is you. Yeah. No, I'm not talking building this either, okay? Now, I'm not a builder, in case you're wondering. Don't call me to help you build anything. It, it'll be a disaster. We went on a mission trip to Oklahoma, and I was the gopher. So that's how good I can build. But yeah, I don't know if you know, somebody noticed the wheelbarrow? Some, some people bumped right into it and said, what's that? Yeah, it, it's full of, full of bricks, full of dance. Oh, let me, let me under, clear, clarify that word, dance, because there was a guy in the first service that said, I was called dense all my life, and now I figured out that ain't a bad thing. This is a very dense brick. It's, it's hard, and it's heavy, and it was, it was in Main Street last week, and so watch where you drive. Okay, there's a hole over there. Because i got a wheelbarrow full of them. And they're heavy and they're sturdy and, and heavy trucks go over them, but most of them they don't crumble. And, and today I'm talking to you about one brick, okay, one brick at a time. It's, it's not in, in, in uh, honor of Pink Floyd, okay, those of you who are that old. It's not another brick in the wall, but uh, it's just one brick at a time. Think about your life. Think about growing up. Anybody got kids? Soon? Yeah, you're going you're gonna to build in them. You're going to grow them, and you want them to be strong and sturdy. And that's what I want to talk about, how, how Jesus himself is, is our foundation. He wants to build in us. So last week I started out, you know, we, we talk about being a prayer warrior, and we gather and have prayer gathering, and we do all these praying, and then, then we head on out the door. But even this morning, I want to say something to you. It's going to be like the connecting thread, the Lincoln log on everything about this build series. And this is what I wrote for me. You don't have to agree with it, but this is what I wrote for me. I'm going to build a relationship with Jesus Christ every single day until the day I die. And then on that day, I will be with the one that I had built the relationship forever and ever. That's me. That's my claim to me. And it was an amazing journey this morning as I'm kind of getting up and processing things. How many of you get up with this? Oh, God. Oh, God, it's morning. You know what we should get up? We should get up with this. Thank God. Thank God that I, I am up. I am moving. I'm functioning. I might not be mentally coherent at this time, but I'll get there. Some of you are like that right now. You're going to get there. You're just not there yet. But you get up and you start moving, you start functioning, and it should be, thank God, I get to move. Because he's building something, he, he arose you from that bed for this, his purpose, not yours. For his purpose to proclaim his glory through you. He's building, he hasn't built. Built is a word meaning completed, finished, through. And uh, some people, I just have to chuckle because they look at, oh, Pastor Steve, he's built, he's got it, he's, uh, he's done, God's done with him. No, God works on him every single moment of every single day. He's building in me. He's building patience, and he's building wisdom, and he's building perseverance. Anybody with me? A little more perseverance would be good because we got too many, ah, heck with it. Ah, done. Ah, I'm fed up. Ah, you there? You didn't say that about your kids, did you? You might have said a lot of things that, you know, I'm done with you. Ah, out the door. 
No, you still, you tucked them back in and, and you built in them a little bit more and you straightened them out a little bit more. And that's where we're at. So we want to build a relationship on the foundation. Last week we talked about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It'd be no big deal if it was just the Tower of Pisa. But it's the Leaning Tower, 18 feet lean because they didn't build on a firm foundation. There was clay underneath there. But the foundation, like the kids found out today, if we just throw this, these bricks down here, this wood down here, it's just a mess. But if we build, if we build on Jesus Christ, then that foundation can be strong and sturdy, and we can rise up every single day in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So how, how do I know I need to be built? What do I need to bring to God to build me? It really is a, a great question, and, but the answer really isn't that hard. When you come to Jesus Christ, he needs just a couple of things, okay? And David says it very clearly here in Psalm 51, verses 15 and 17. He says this, David, open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. So many times we're too silent. This is how we start building a relationship with God and with Jesus. Open my mouth because I'm too silent, I'm too afraid, and my lips are going to declare your praise. It says, you do not delight in sacrifice, so I'd bring it. But it goes on to say, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. So he says, what do I get to do? How can you build in me? And he says this, okay. Oops, sorry. I was a little bit too fast on the finger there. My sacrifice, O oh God, is this. A broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. A broken spirit. I brought this brick down for a reason because there's a bunch of them out there. And that's my little gift to you, by the way. You're welcome to take one. Not to drop one on anybody's toe or to throw one, okay? But to take one and maybe remind yourself that even though it's broken, a broken heart, a broken and contrite spirit, he is in the business of building. He can take a broken person and build them better i'm wondering how many people might have come in here broken today oh you're not showing it because you look really good today you polished up real good but on the inside you're broken and that's what david says what you need is a broken heart a broken and contrite spirit and this is where i'm at i truly believe that it takes broken hearts to get to the foot of the cross because so many times when we're not broken when we're i got this i got this I don't know if anybody here today has ever said, I got this. No. God, go on to somebody else. Go on to somebody else who needs you. I got this. And before you know it, you ain't got it no more. It got you. It spun you around. It tore you up. And then you call back to Jesus. Jesus, I need you. And I thought I had this. See, when we're building, when we're building, you just can't throw it together. It'll be a mess. You just can't throw some mortar on this and slap it in there. I don't know if anybody has ever built anything with brick. But if you've ever watched a good brick mason, they're amazing. They're amazing. They, they get that brick, and sometimes they trim it with a couple of wax. They put that mortar on there, and then they set it perfectly, and it's a couple of taps, and they throw a level up there, and they're grabbing another one. But you know what they're building? They're building a wall or a house one brick at a time. And I want you to take that phrase and kind of twist it around to this. Jesus Christ is building you one day. One moment, one second, at a, maybe it's even one crisis at a time because maybe that's where you're at. You're in the midst of a crisis. I can't see the way out. I can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it. Well, he says, let me, do, let me do this. Let me build you so you can, can go over it. Let me build in you a persevering spirit. Let me build in you the strength to overcome the barrier. Even if you're broken because this is what that master mason does. He'll, he'll trim it. And it'll fit just perfect. Jesus Christ is in the perfect business. He wants you to fit just perfect. You know, so many times I ask a lot of questions just so I can make sure you're awake. And here's another one. How many of y'all are in a relationship? Okay, it's not. How many of y'all want to be in a relationship? How many of y'all are thinking about being in a relationship? Okay, that's, some of y'all don't care about being in a relationship, do you? But in a relationship, understand this, you build it. Not just one hour, one day a week. You build it every single day you build a relationship. And the same with Jesus Christ. 
You build that relationship with Him to be strong and sturdy and straight because He is the chief cornerstone. And He draws those walls together in perfection so they're not wobbly and wiggling all over the place. He wants you to build strong and up and, and higher if you'll come to Him more than one hour a week. So let me ask you, people in relationships or want to be, how strong is your relationship if you're only in it one hour a week? It's weak, isn't it? It's very weak. It's very wobbly. And so you got to figure out, if I want this relationship to work in my marriage, in my spouse, in my mate, whoever, I need to work at it every day. I need to build in it. The same with Jesus Christ. We can't expect to come here one hour a week and be strong. We've got to take His Word, read His Word, implement His Word, show His Word, not shove His Word. hope you got that. Show it, not shove it. And we have to build this relationship one brick, one day, one moment at a time. He strengthens us. He grows us. He shows us. He trims us where we're rough around the edges. Maybe you've got this tongue wags a little too much. Maybe you need to trim a little bit of that off. Maybe you've got a little bit of selfishness in you. Trim a little bit. Maybe you don't like sacrificing. Trim a little bit of that off so you can fit perfectly in his plan because as I said he created you on purpose for his purpose not mine and surely not yours yet sometimes we think well he can't use me there's too much too many crises is going on in my life I'm too banged up bruised up too broken how can he use me wouldn't it be great if God in his infinite wisdom just went you're good you're perfect you don't, you don't never need to come to church or read the Bible. You don't ever sin again. Nothing will ever attack you. Nothing will ever harm you. Wouldn't that be awesome if he did that? Well, you know what? He kind of sort of did that when his son came. And his son came and his blood poured off that cross and it covered every single sin have, will, ever do. It covered it. He's, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He's got us. He, he reached down where you were in that place called the muck and the mire. And you can picture where that is. And he, and he reached down and, and he pulled you out of it and he set you on, I believe it's called the firm foundation. And he cleansed you with his blood and he turned you white as snow to go and to show. Not to continue sitting and sinning. And so as we like to say, we throw that phrase, let's, oh, just get real. I wish they were just real. Well, how about a real gut check this morning? If I was just to call out your name and you were to tell me, hey, man, where are you broken at? Would you have an answer or answers? And I'm broken here. I'm broken there. There's probably not one of us here that can't fill in the, hey, I'm broken. Because we, we come here to be mended, not wounded. This is a hospital. And we come here to be mended and healed. Not to leave broken. And so in order to figure out why, where we're broken, we just kind of need to be transparent. A lot of us aren't because a lot of us don't want other people to know that we're sinners. So let me just tell you, y'all are sinners. Hope you got that. And y'all means me too. Don't just look at, well, Pastor Steve, yeah, Pastor Steve's a sinner. But I'm trying to build a better relationship with Jesus Christ every day not to. But I still get up at 2 in the morning. Anybody here? 2 a.m.ers. Pace. Walk, pound, fight, audibly get behind me, Satan. you got no domain here. That's what we do because Satan doesn't like it. He hates it when you come against him. But when you build that relationship with Jesus Christ, you are a fortress, a mighty fortress against even the thoughts that he puts in your head. Even the times that, well, nobody likes me, everybody hates me, just going to eat some worms. Uh, you know that song. But understand this. Jesus loves me, this I know. You don't want me to sing it, but I'll say it. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is. He's a brick. He's strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, and that's where we need to get it. So many times we want to be a better person. Oh, just, just mold me into somebody better. But you don't want to let go of that bitterness. You don't want to let go of that, that money, that hobby, that bling thing. You don't want to let go of that drug or that alcohol, that lust or that porn or whatever it is. But you want him to build you to be a better person. 
One of the most mind-boggling journeys I ever took as a pastor is walking up into the hospital. Did you get where I was going? Into the hospital, into the hospital room to pray for a lady dying of cancer. And I walked in that room and I heard this like a jet engine. I'm like, Lord of mercy. And I step in there and it's an air purifying system. Why? Because she's sitting in there smoking. And the words are, Pastor Steve, thank God you're here. Would you please pray for God to heal me? <sighs> are, are you kidding me? You want me to ask the Almighty to heal you when you're not willing to give up what's killing you? You want him to build a better person out of you? And you won't give up what's breaking you? Are you kidding me? That's not who he is. He said, man, if you'll just open up your hand, I'll remove that from you. It ain't going to be easy. There might be some scars left over, but you can overcome this. You can be an overcomer. And I pray that you will understand, I'm not here to beat you down. I'm here to build you up in a better relationship with Jesus Christ. But if I can speak to you this morning and speak to that person whose heart is breaking this morning because you think you've done something so bad you can never be used, that's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the pit of hell right there. And so many times we forget where we, we, excuse me, we want to remember where we come from, but forget where we're at. We want to always remember, I, I once was lost, so I'm just a loser. No, I once was. I was a loser. Now I've been found. And so many times we need to find out that we need a gut check in our lives. And so here's the gut check. David says some amazing words. I pray you just either read along with me or let's take a journey through your Bible. But here it is in Psalm 139. It's kind of a long story. Take a deep breath. Maybe take a sip of water. But here we go. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. That's pretty clear. Can't hide nothing from you. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You design my Discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Man, that's straight right there. Before, the, before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you, excuse me, Lord, know it, you, you know it completely. Sorry. It goes on here. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Think about a brick when it gets put in there. It's hemmed in and then his hand on top of you. You are covered by him. And here we go as we take a little bit further journey. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to obtain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Come on, we're a little remote. Here we go. If I rise on the wings of of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. Hold on to that thought. You created my inmost being. You knit me together. You, you're in the process of building me in my mom's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Amen. Understand this. David was saying, I can't hide from you. I don't know how many good hiding seekers there are here. I mean, I remember when I was younger, we used to play that in the church, and it's a big old place to play hide and seek. But inevitably, you got found. And some of you might be here hiding, and he's already there. Even in the dark of darks, he's there. David said this, you, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. There's nothing we can hide. And so if you're broken today, and you're trying to ask him to fix you in your brokenness, and you don't want to give up your brokenness, understand he's not going to fix you. 
You've got to be delivered from the demon that's breaking you. And if it's whatever, whatever it is, he can deliver you from that. He's in the building business since before you were born, knitting you together one stitch at a time, building you one brick at a time, day by day, moment by moment. He is the chief cornerstone. He, he does hold it together. And if you don't understand the chief cornerstone, it is that block that everything else ties into that's perfectly set. And some of you are saying, but, but I can't because... And then you're filling in the blank. But I can't because I'm, I'm this. I went there. I've been in jail. I've been here. I've been down to the depths of hell. I've got this done to my body. I've done that to people. Understand this. There's a scripture verse in Philippians 4 verse 13 that says it very clearly. Paul says, I can do all, all, all this through him who gives me strength. He's talking about Jesus Christ. I can do nothing without him. Or I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. And I know sometimes in our lives, the kick in the gut comes. The phone call, you went for a, a typical physical and you get the call from the doctor. Hey, I need, to, need you to come, to come in here. here. There's something that's shown up. And all of a sudden you're sweating and you're trembling. Or maybe it's that relationship. Or maybe somebody has passed on out of the blue. Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, whatever that maybe is, you're not ready for it. And Paul's saying, but, but I can do it all through Christ Jesus who strengthens me to get through this day. This moment, this second is where I'm at. I can do all things. Well, what's an all thing? What's an all thing? Is it, is it eat a casserole? I don't know. That's pretty, that's, I don't know if I can do that, Lord. But if I'm hungry enough, I'm going to eat a casserole. If I'm on a desert island and there's no iguana to eat, I'm going to eat me a casserole, okay? But understand this. What is this? I can do all things. What is all things as he's building in me? Well, I'm going to read something by the unknown author, and I'm probably glad he's unknown because if he ever found out I took his writing and wrote my writing in there with it, he might be a little upset. But since he's unknown, he gets no credit. But I'm going to get a little passionate about this because this is where I'm at with Jesus Christ. I wonder where you are with Jesus Christ. So listen with your heart for just a couple minutes as I take a journey with the unknown author. I'm being built by Jesus Christ every single day. I have not been completed by him. I am going to build a relationship with him until the day I die. And then on that day, I will be with the one who built in me a relationship to have with him. I'm his servant. I'm sold out. My code of conduct is the Holy Bible. Prayer and His Word are my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by the fires. I am, I am His for all of eternity. I will not get out, sell out, be taken out, or be pushed out because He's building me to be a servant for Him. I'm faithful, enabled capable and dependable if he needs me i'm there because i'm a servant for him if he needs me to be a sunday school teacher for children i'm there if he needs me to work with the youth i'm there if he needs me to help with the senior adults or sit in his house and learn i'm there because he's building me to be a servant he can use me wherever he needs me because i'm there for him not me and this is, again, not my writings. I'm just reading here. I'm not a baby. I don't need to be pampered, petted, or primed. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me to come to his house. Why? Because I'm a servant. He's building me to be. I'm not a wimp. I don't need to be cuddled, cradled, catered to. Why? Because he's building me to be a servant, not a sitter. I'm committed. I'm all in. I can't have my feelings hurt enough to turn my back on him. I can't be discouraged enough to ditch him. I can't lose enough to quit him. If I end up with nothing, I win. The devil can't defeat me. People can't disillusion me. Sickness can't stop me. Battles can't beat me. And here's the close. Money can't buy me. The government can't silence me. Death can't destroy me and hell can't handle me. Amen. And that's where we're at when we're building in Jesus Christ. If you've got to that place where you're built, this is just a book. 
That's all it is. But to me, it's a building block for my day to day. It's an overcoming story of where I think I can't overcome. It's a healing scripture where I'm sick. It's words to my lips when somebody needs comfort. They're building me to be better. I wonder where you are today in the building process. We've got the foundation hardened and it's ready. we got the bricks out. They're ready to go down to build on every single day. And yes, it might be scary. He might have to chisel away something that you're not willing to give up. But I promise you, the hundredfold blessings are coming when you get rid of that which you can't hold on to. And he will give you that which you never saw coming. That's who he is. That's what he does. He's in the miracle business. I wonder what business we are in. Are we in the saying business? Are we in the showing business to others? Because there's a world out there sitting wondering what we're doing in here. They're wondering because we're not out there showing. And that's not looking down our nose at them either, either because they didn't come to church or they didn't sit up front or they didn't dress like, nice like you or they don't have a house or a car or a pet or a pony like you. They need to see the real God who's doing real things in people who really want to be changed. And so this morning is we have what we always call the invitation. I don't invite you to me. I can't get you to heaven. That's not my purpose. Jesus Christ who died on that cross is waiting to receive you. So if you want to come to him, this altar is open. I'll be down here if you need a prayer, if you need whatever. If you want to come to him, if you want to come to Calvary, if you just want a burden lifted and just want to get it off your chest. The man, I'm here to talk to you. But this is the challenge. If you want to be built to be a better person, you cannot go out the same way you came in. If you go out broken, it's on you. If you go out bitter, it's on you. If you go out blabbing about this or that, it's on you. But if you want to be built, he's willing and ready to build you into the Christian he desires you to be. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you at what we say the end of the service. But it's really not the end. It really is just the beginning. As, as Bibles are being zipped up, as thoughts are being shot down the road at the restaurant, hoping everybody's gone, let's stop for this moment right here. Let my words be to the broken that's here. Let, let my words be to those who want to do a battle for Jesus. Let my words be to those ears that have come seeking to hear about a redeeming Savior that loves them beyond words I could ever say. So this morning, Father, as your family rises up, speak to them. Let them know that you hear their cries from that dark place and you're there to heal them, but they've got to be willing to give it up. Let them know that you are a mountain mover, you're a universe maker. You can heal them no matter what place, what problem they're dealing with. So as we sing to you, Father, open our eyes. Let us come to you. Let us grow this kingdom of God you want us to grow. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I Fill me 
Stop that sand becoming so irritating. Let it go. Give it back to Satan. 
Claim Jesus Christ as King of King and Lord of Lords, and He will build in you the kingdom that is yet to come. One more verse. You come to Him right now. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration And there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee How great Thou art, how great Thou art my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank You for this day, and thank You for this opportunity to come and worship in Your house, Father God. Father, I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for how this church and our community is growing. And Father, I pray that uh, as we go from here today that we'll fix our eyes upon you and we'll focus on you and we won't focus on the things that are important to the world and that we'll give our lives to you and we'll focus on the cross and we'll allow you, you to take our brokenness and build us up brick by brick and piece by piece and that we can go and be the, be the people of God that you want us to be. And Father, as we take this offering, I pray that you bless the gift and the giver. In your great name I pray. Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Woo, what a good day to be in the Lord's house. Lots going on. Ladies, don't forget, 4 o'clock, women's ministry team meeting. You want to be part of that. I don't want to forget it either. Lots going on. Don't forget the choir tonight. Going to be a fellowship afterwards. If you said you're going to bring food, bring food because it'll be a tiny fellowship if you don't. So uh, bring that. Shoot it out there on your media as well. Let everybody know to come tonight. We have got Britt and Tessa Clark coming to for membership at Calvary Baptist Church. So come on up here. Britt and Tessa Clark. <laughs> Britt comes by letter and Tessa comes for baptism. So can I get somebody to say amen? You're welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Can I have somebody come stand by them and say, you're never standing alone at Calvary Baptist Church. And also, we have Ryan and Holly Crutcher. We've known each other for a day or two <laughs> since, since they was hitched. I don't know who hitched them, but it was an interesting place. <laughs> but they come from First Baptist in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Little Leveland as mem to seek membership here. Can I get somebody to raise their hand and say, welcome here? Welcome. Amen. Can I get somebody to come stand by them and say, you never stand alone at Calvary Baptist Church? And then before you run out the door to the restaurant, run on down here. I told them they would get cheek pinches and kisses. So whichever one you're up to do, then you come and do that, okay? Jonathan. Yes, you stand got and one grab more? a hand, please. We're going to sing God is on the move. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in a mighty way. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. Have a great afternoon. I see 
a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. I see a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. Any time the gospel stirs a searching soul, and someone says, Send me here I go. Oh, no. 